Hello everyone. So in this pre-lecture tutorial, I thought we'd review limiting reagent calculations. So again, in limiting reagent calculations, one of the reagents of the reaction is added in excess so that a certain amount of it remains once the other reagent is completely consumed. And basically that causes the reaction to stop and it limits the stoichiometry of the reaction. And an important thing to be able to sort of figure out and come to grips with regarding stoichiometry problems is to be able to identify when you actually have a limiting reactant problem in front of you. They won't always be clearly labeled and sometimes the word limiting reactant or limiting reagent does not appear in the problem. And so really the telltale sign lies right here. Okay, if you take a look at this problem, Notice they tell you that I have 80 grams of the iodine 5 oxide, so I'm given information about the amount of one reactant. I'm also told that I have 28 grams of carbon monoxide, so I've also been given information about the quantity of the other reactant. Whenever I'm given information about more than one reactant involved in a chemical reaction, that automatically should put a red flag up in the air saying this is a limiting reagent calculation. And once I've made that discovery, then basically I have to make sure to figure out which of the two reagents is limiting. Because if I don't do that and I just assume or pick one of the two starting amounts and run the calculations, I run the risk of actually miscalculating. So in this particular problem, I want us to determine the mass of iodine that is produced. And then they also want us to determine the mass of the excess reagent that remains. So I'm going to need to first figure out which is the limiting reagent. And the way that we do that, again, all of stoichiometry involves comparison between moles. So I'm going to have to convert each of these starting masses of reagents to moles. But then once I do that, that's just going to tell me how many moles I have available. How many moles of each reagent did I add to the container where the reaction is taking place? If I want to figure out which is the limiting reagent, then I need to go a step further. Now, last year when I taught this to my regular chemistry classes, um, I encouraged them to actually calculate out one of the products and then compare the two amounts of products to each other in order to determine the limiting reagent. There is actually a shortcut, which I'm going to show you right now. What you're going to do is, let's start with the iodine 5 oxide. We're told we have 80 grams of it. So 80 grams of the iodine 5 oxide. I'm going to convert that to moles. So again, I'll leave it to you to verify, but the molar mass of the iodine 5 oxide is 333.8 grams per mole of the iodine 5 oxide. Okay, now that's going to give me 0 0.240 moles of the iodine 5 oxide, but you're not quite done yet. The last step to help you figure out which is the limiting reagent for each of the reagents is you're going to have to divide by the stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, so what that means is 0 0.240 moles of iodine 5 oxide divided by a stoichiometric coefficient of 1 understood that's 0 0.240 moles of the iodine 5 oxide. Now I'm going to repeat the process for the carbon monoxide. So I'm told I have 28.0 grams of carbon monoxide. Again, I'll leave it to you to verify, but the molar mass of carbon monoxide is 28.01 grams of carbon monoxide per moles of carbon monoxide but that's going to give me one mole of carbon monoxide, but the stoichiometric coefficient of carbon monoxide is 5. So I'm going to divide this by 5, and I get 0 0.200 moles of the carbon monoxide. The smaller of these two numbers will actually tell you which of the two reagents is the limiting reagent. And as we can see, the 0 0.2 moles of carbon monoxide is smaller. So that means that the carbon monoxide is my limiting reagent. Once I have that figured out, 
then basically I can go ahead and calculate out how much iodine would be produced. I usually favor starting once again from the mass that was given. So 28 grams of carbon monoxide. I'm going to set up the stoichiometric calculation as we started to during the determination of the limiting reagent. But then here I'm going to go ahead and include my mole ratio. For every five moles of carbon monoxide, I form one mole of iodine. So five moles of carbon monoxide for every one mole of iodine. And then they wanted a mass. And so that means I'm going to have to convert moles of iodine to grams of iodine. And again, I'll leave the verification of the molar mass to you, but it's 253.8 grams of iodine. And so that means I'm going to form 50.7 grams of iodine. Okay, now that only answers question one. Question two is, well, determine the mass of the excess reagent that remains. So and the way to do that is let's go ahead and start with our 28 grams of carbon monoxide. Go ahead and convert that back to moles. Okay, and let's actually convert from moles of carbon monoxide to moles of the iodine 5 oxide. So now I'd have to check the mole ratio between the carbon monoxide and the iodine 5 oxide, which again, this is one understood, the coefficient for the iodine 5 oxide. So that means that the mole ratio is 1 to 5. And then I'm going to convert the moles of iodine 5 oxide to grams of iodine 5 oxide using the molar mass I calculated earlier. And I get 66.7 grams of iodine 5 oxide that have been consumed. But if you recall, I started with 80 grams of the iodine 5 oxide. So I'm going to take the 80 grams of the iodine 5 oxide that I started with, subtract from it the 66.7 grams of the iodine 5 oxide that were consumed according to my calculations, and I get 13.3 grams of the iodine 5 oxide remaining. Okay, so essentially figuring out the amount of excess reagent is just running another stoichiometric calculation, except instead of calculating the amount of product related back to the amount of the limiting reagent, what you're doing is you're actually going to calculate, given a certain amount of the limiting reagent, how much of the other reactant was consumed. All right, now. Another thing to keep in mind is, okay, what if I have to actually fold in a percent yield calculation relative to a limiting reagent problem? Well, the limiting reagent portion of the stoichiometry problem is actually still exactly the same. The only thing that's different is you'd have to eventually, once you get to the mass of product that was produced, then you have to keep in mind that you have this equation for percent yield. The percent yield is equal to the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. And usually when we run stoichiometry calculations, basically we're calculating theoretical yield. So this theoretical yield is the stoichiometric calculation, and usually this is provided to you in the problem. So, for example, it says, what about if in the above situation, so we're still dealing with the same reaction that we had on the other slide. If in the above situation only 0.16 moles of iodine was produced, then what mass of iodine was produced, and then what percentage yield of iodine was produced? So basically, they're telling you 
that this, this 0.16 moles, this is your actual yield. And if you recall, your theoretical yield of your iodine was expressed in grams. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go and let's convert 0.16 moles of iodine. Oops, let's make that a little neater. Let's convert that to grams. So for every one mole of iodine, the molar mass of iodine is 253.8 grams of iodine. That turns out to be 40.6 grams of iodine. Now, if I want to calculate the percent yield, then the 40.6 grams is the actual yield. This is how much you truly got when you ran the reaction. And your theoretical yield is that 50.7 grams of iodine that we calculated in the first part that we worked on the previous slide. And so what we're going to do is to calculate the percent yield, I'm going to take 40.6 uh, 40 grams of iodine, which is my actual yield, divide that by 50.7 grams of iodine, which is my theoretical yield. Now I'm going to multiply that by 100%. If I do this math, notice again my grams of iodine will cancel, then I get 80.1% yield. Okay, so once again, dealing with limiting region problems is not all that different from regular stoichiometry problems. It's just a matter of figuring out which of the two reagents is going to be consumed first. Again, there are multiple ways to do it, but this trick where you employ the stoichiometric coefficient is probably the quickest way to do it and will save you the most time. So I'm going to put a follow-up assignment for you guys to try problems like this on your own to confirm that you watched this video. And then in class tomorrow, we'll do some additional examples. Once again, if you have questions, by all means, email or see me during class, and I will see you guys tomorrow.